What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Odd Shepherd channel coming to you with a playoff edition of MLB Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. Goes a long way for me on this video. Goes a long way for you. That way you become a press whenever great content is going live here at our little neck of the YouTube woods. My friends, we made it. Friday was an absolute smash in the regular season. Good to get finished on a high note. On a high note, like my voice from time to time. But anyway, we have reached the playoffs. It is about damn time. I've been waiting for meaningful baseball because the last month it's like, well, who's out? Who's out? We reacted well over the, for the most part, the, the last couple of weeks, very profitable, exciting times to be here on the Lindy's Leans, Likes and Likes program, of course, but it is playoff time. I've got some great plays for you. We have props ahead of time. So we're able to kind of delve through those, be able to project out for those, do the market-based approach over there, over at uh, Odd Chopper as well. Great stuff. But Bet365, are you kidding me? Brand new offer that is showing up here just in time for the MLB playoffs. Bet $1. This is, this is not a joke. Bet $1. Get $365 in bet credits. Yeah, it's bet credits, but it's $365 for a dollar. So yeah, you deposit at the link below at Bet365. That's an absurd deal, and it's only available in a few states. A few states. So if it's available in yours, fire it up down below. I know Kentucky, you just got sports betting. Know it's available to you. Uh, I'm jealous. I'm jealous. That would be awesome sauce. But you can get uh, all that goodness down below. There's a couple of other great links, too, if you're looking to get at a new sports book. And yes, we are talking about a, a market-based approach where we want to be odd shopping. That's why it's called Odd Shopper. Get exposure to these books like Bet365. And they have some of the best lines for NFL by far. I really hate that you have access to this, and I don't. It's a, it's a joke. It's only if you're 21 and over. And if you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. All righty, y'all. Producer Jacob is on hand. He's excited. He's ready to rock here for playoff baseball. Uh, NFL Liddy's also a smash on Friday. It's good stuff. Producer Jacob knows, except for he's mad at me about Tony Pollard, I'm sure. I, is everybody mad about Tony Pollard? No. Yeah. It was an absolute smash. If you hit 80% of your props, you should probably... Anyway, it's MLB playoff time. That's what you're here to talk about. Let's get to the picks. Our day begins, our four-game set begins with Texas-Tampa Bay. Some weird stuff happening at the end. Texas was a massive favorite, massive favorite to close out the AL West over the weekend. Houston comes from behind late. Wish I had that. There was some massive money you could have made there. A couple of my friends did. Uh, not myself. I'm the betting expert. Anyway, we have the Texas Rangers, Tampa Bay Rays here for this one. Jordan Montgomery, Southpaw going up against Tyler Glass now. And Tampa Bay, obviously their lineup is weaker because they have injuries and terrible people that used to be on their baseball teams. But Luke Rayley, Jose Siri, Brandon Lau, all going to be out here for uh, the, the near future, what it would look like. Now, Brandon Lau, they're talking about him possibly coming back to the fray here at some point in time in these playoffs if they continue on. And I do think Tampa Bay, if I had to be taking a futures on any of these teams, I still think they have the bullpen and the bats to be able to make this work. Of course, the starting pitcher too, Tyler Glass. Now this is their ace. And some teams leading off with their ace, some of the dogs not leading out their race, uh, basically punting a game one here. We'll talk about that one next. But Jordan Montgomery here on this side of it, this makes complete sense to me that he's going to be the guy that they're relying on to open out their series. You want to be saving some other pieces. Obviously, it would be great to have those pieces be Jacob DeGrom and Max Scherzer. But such is life. You don't get uh, no soup for you. No soup for you. But Jordan Montgomery, 310x woe, but 37.9% hard hit percentage. And just good stuff overall, just average stuff. 21.4% K rate. He's not going to impress you in that regard by any means. But you know what? He's not John Means in that. I mean, John Means. Been better. That was a John Means joke. That was a Means joke. I was being Means. That was another Means joke. But Tyler Glass now on the other side. I don't know. Baltimore's obviously not going to be on this slate forever. We're not going to talk about Baltimore probably forever. Tyler Glass now does an amazing job at racking up strikeouts. 33.4% K rate. Thought about taking an under here, considering you'd get Adolis Garcia back into the fray. Josh Young, some of these other guys. They do have those strikeouts, though, where I think 7.5 is a pretty standard number for what we could expect for Tyler Glass. Now, I would actually be leaning now on the over based on what I think this projected lineup is going to be for the Rangers. But overall, friends, I think we just kind of get our day started with a very clear-cut, straightforward play. I love the idea of the Texas Rangers. I love the idea of them. 
but I like Tampa Bay's bullpen and I like a, a little bit of what they're doing in terms of starting pitching for this series. And it's just going to start right from the get go. Tyler Glass now, the ace. Let's go. The ace of spades. Let's go. Tampa Bay money line gets our day started in a pretty convincing way. Uh, just a half unit for me on this one. Oh, we got some fire coming up later. And also uh, in terms of props, again, thought about the Tyler Glass now one, probably going to be staying away from the K prop. So don't attach this to the to money line because we've been doing that a lot. Next game, my friends. M-I-N-N-E-S-O-T-A. Look at that. I can spell. Oh, good. You can count and you can count on seeing me in the parking lot. Obviously, I told you that plus 750 up to plus 850. We were looking at Minnesota Twins futures, and I was kind of dabbling, throwing that one in here for the people who might have missed that. But I do think the Minnesota Twins are kind of set up nicely for a series against the Toronto Blue Jays. It's a lot better than facing the Astros. I'm happy about it. This sucks, though. Kevin Gaussman is really, really good at pitching, as is Pablo Lopez for the most part this season. It's been a little bit... Uh, Last time out against Oakland, not making me too excited. But Minnesota, 27% K rate, the highest against right-handed pitching in all of baseball. But they also have a 111 uh, WRC plus because, well, Byron Buxton, not even probably going to make this roster, which is wild to think about. Wild. We'll get the official announcement before game time tomorrow. But as I look at the construction of this team, Matt Walner, Max Kepler, lots of pieces from the left side. Alex Kirilov, our boy. So many pieces from the left side that can bring the power. You get Carlos Correa confirmed back in this lineup for tomorrow. That news broke uh, no more than an hour ago. But Kevin Gaussman, this is obviously a terrifying matchup, and I am in no way, shape, or form looking at a money line here. Although, if I had to do anything here, it'd probably be on the minus 102 side. Don't hurt me, family, if you're watching this. But Toronto Blue Jays, They've got their ace go, and this guy's incredible. 31.1% K rate, kind of similar to Tyler Glass now in the last spot. He can give up that hard contact, 43.3%, 9.9% barrel percentage for Kevin Gaussman as well. But he misses so many bats, and that 27% K rate for the Twins, I don't know. We haven't hosted a game one in a hot second. A lot different, not just having a game three where we lose and I fly home for it and whatever else. But this is going to be the first Twins playoff game I miss in over a decade. And I'm doing it because, well... I just bought a house and I need to make money. So we're going to continue to bet and make money. Sound good? Great. Awesome. Good talk. It's kind of a humble brag throwing in there too, but you knew that. This, that this is a new studio. Life is beautiful. Life is wonderful. So for Pablo Lopez, I would love to back this individual. I really, 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 really would here. But the problem is we saw a slight downtick in the velocity against Oakland. He's now given up five, three, and three earned runs against the White Sox the Angels, and the Athletics to finish out the season. Let me repeat the three teams that he struggled against to finish out the season. The White Sox, the Angels, and the Athletics. Oh, God. Here's the thing. Over the course of this season, it is now going to be sub-70 degrees. In all of these playoff series, you're going to see this 7.5 number show up time and time and time and time again. It is just a standard practice of postseason baseball. You get incredible rosters, but just like the All-Star game, what do I preach? Pitching, because starting pitching can win out more times than not. And so I'm looking at the 7.5. The thing is, I have this at 6.8, and I still see enough ammunition here on both sides of these lineups that I do not want to be dabbling with it right now. Does it move to eight? Do I get minus 105? If either of those happen, I would be taking the under of seven and a half. So I'm going to call it a lean TBD on that one. But I want to also throw out two power candidates where I kind of like their props where they're sitting currently in the marketplace. As I go to my special uh, handy dandy notebook, actually it's a Excel spreadsheet. It's basically where I calculate out projected home runs based on launch angle, based on the exit velocity, based on platoon splits, based on everything. Max Kepler, Jorge, uh, Jorge Polanco, Matt Walner. I decided to just pick two of them. My two favorites being Kepler and Walner. The two outfielders, plus 390 at FanDuel, Matt Walner, plus 330 at FanDuel. Wild to see Matt Walner at plus 330, but I think he gets moved up in the lineup here. I would probably wait until the lineups drop here. Maybe he gets pushed back, and I wouldn't want plus 330 if he isn't batting fourth or fifth. Those two, 
things don't happen, you probably move him back. But against right-handed pitching this season, he has been our cash cow time and time again. I'm thinking about pulling the trigger, but I kind of want to get confirmed status on what is this playoff lineup going to be? Who is going to be inactive for it here? Because there are some candidates here. Royce Lewis, does he get back? We have obviously Byron Buxton, who has been playing simulated games, but has had a terrible season. Again, we're spending a lot of time on this because there are so many perspective bets that I want to make, but I haven't made yet. So if you want to know if I fire up anything here, hit me up on X at Eric Lindquist. But as it stands right now, we're taking the under of seven and a half for a lean, as well as a Kepler Walner home run. Want to get confirmed statuses on everybody uh, before we fire that up. My friends, Bet365, again, talked about this at the top. It's so ridiculous. Hey, that's why I have a ridiculous face on there. But bet $1, get $365 in bonus bets. It's such a dumb deal. It is only available in a few states. And obviously, it's available if you're 18 or older in Kentucky. I don't know how many 18-year-olds are watching this right now. I prefer the 21 and over crowd. Just going to throw it out there. But again, your boy, you know, once upon a time, the Poker Stars days. Those were beautiful days for everybody involved, wouldn't you say? Yeah. They were. Producer Jacob has no idea what I'm talking about, which is just terrifying me right now. But anyway, Bet365, I'm telling you, phenomenal. Bet $1, get $365 in bonus bets. That's literally the deal, and I have nothing else to add to it. You deposit $10 or more, and you're done. You deposit $10 or more, and you're done. So it's turning $10 into $365 with $1 having to be put in play. Unbelievable stuff from Bet365. Let's go punish the books. Let's go make money this postseason together. But build that bankroll. Sustain that bankroll with $365 in bonus bets. Only for 21 and over, 18 and over in Kentucky. And if you have a gambling problem, please call or text 1-800-GAMBLER. Off to the last two games. Similar to me having a blue background behind me with a green screen and just no fucking sense of colors on this show. Good job, Eric. Good job, good effort. The Arizona Diamondbacks did a wild thing that I think makes complete sense when you reverse engineer it, but it caught me by surprise. They announced Brandon Fatt. Yes, the Brandon Fatt who has struggled all season long despite being one of the top prospects in their organization and in all of baseball as a starting pitcher. Brandon Fatt is their game one starter. This holds back Merrill Kelly. This holds back, of course, the ace in Zach Allen. Two guys that we've backed nonstop this season. I was a little bit floored, but Milwaukee, they announced that Brandon Woodruff will not be on the roster for this season. He's got some kind of a shoulder injury that I've never heard of, so there's that. He's not going to be pitching here in this series, and that means Corbin Burns, Freddie Peralta, and who? Whom, if you will? Whom will it be? I don't know. Any option is not really all that intriguing of an option, if you ask me. Now, you can run into a bullpen situation. You can throw out Rhea, Hauser, whomever else you want. Wade Miley has been serviceable in relief stints and, and things of that nature. Not relief stints and, like, he starts. But I'm saying there's a lot of starters who will become bullpen-type uh, relievers in these kind of series. You just have to kind of be on the high alert of who those could be here. And that comes down to what these postseason rosters are going to look like. They get announced before the first pitch, and hey, that's the team you're going to play with for the entire postseason series. It can change as the series progress, as you progress in the playoffs. And if you lose, you go to Cabo. So you knew that already. But Brandon Fat, why is it that I was so surprised that he would be the guy who ends up getting the start here? Here is why, because his numbers are abysmal. 462 expected slugging, 44% hard hit percentage, and an 11.7% barrel percentage. That, my friends, is not great. And Brandon Fat, 5.72 ERA, 1.41 whip, and was pitching up in Reno, which is also known as the moon at AAA, really struggled to acclimate, but started to figure some things out towards the end of the season, started to find some success. No better success than his last start, basically pulling an inverse of Pablo Lopez, goes up against the White Sox on the road, five and two thirds, five hits, no walks. No earned runs, eight strikeouts, really good stuff in 87 pitches. They're trying to ride that momentum. Uh, you know, a young kid feeling a little cocky, feeling a little cocky. He's ready to go here for game one here. They're holding back Ke uh, Kelly and Gallon. 
kind of sucks though that you're not going to have game four availability for whomever that would be and game five availability will only be one of the two so just saying an interesting construction they have here but obviously they're going to try to get done with the bats against a corbin burns here who's been electric boogie woogie woogie 32.4 percent hard hit percentage 340 expected slugging 25.5 percent uh, k rate and a 5.3 percent barrel percentage puts that combination of a cutter which is awesome 17.2 percent usage of a curve and a change up and a sinker they all kind of get mixed around 10 to 15 to 20 percent uh, all in that range over the course of the last couple of years but that cutter specifically a great go-to pitch it's uh it's really good gets a lot of weak contact but if Brandon Fat can in any way, shape, or form help out, just carry the line here, I would actually be leaning towards the Arizona sign enough to make it a play for the people here. When I look at this run line, minus 130, I think this is a great attachment actually to Corbin Burns under five and a half strikeouts here. Corbin Burns, yes, you would think with that strikeout rate that this would be something you could go for, 25.5%. But as you look at the construction of this Arizona lineup, they have constantly, time and time again, avoided strikeouts against righty all the way to 20.7% K rate against that handedness. Better than these playoffs, only by Atlanta and Houston. Those are really good pieces to be company in a statistic of any kind. Unless it's cheating, because then Houston wins. Arizona, I'm going to be playing that plus one and a half. I think the attachment of Corbin Burns under five and a half for you, Paul Day people, makes a lot of sense here. But I'm telling you, I think Arizona, if they can sneak this one up, oh, baby, there's some value on the Arizona series as well. Haven't pulled the trigger on that either, but I might. See you in the premium Discord, my friends. And the final game of the night is something that I am so entertained by. It's unbelievable. And for anybody who watched MLB Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Lacks last postseason, you know, the World Series. The Phillies were the pick. And, uh, well, they got there. We were able to hedge out accordingly, make a little bit of profit. And I'm not a big hedge guy, but... You had to read the tea leaves a little bit in the last season. The Phillies, they overkicked their coverage, but that win, that series win against San Diego was so satisfying. And it was just purely because of Zach Wheeler and Aaron Nola going into St. Louis in the first season. Then the San Diego season a series. So many spots where the Phillies just continually got to the plate, made things happen. And I think that they do it again here against Jesus Lizardo. And uh, yeah, a lot of lefties that you're rolling out with the Bryce Harpers, the Kyle Schwarbers, things of that nature. But nice to see a great second half there from Trey Turner. I'm going to be paying crazy attention to Trey Turner's status here. He was day-to-day. -day. He got held out of the regular season finale. I'm pretty positive that he plays here in this one, but... Anyway, I bet it. I already have a unit on this, so there's not a whole lot I can do about it. I back Zach Wheeler in the playoffs. Let me say this one more time. I back Zach Wheeler in the JD playoffs because he is a dude. He is an absolute dude, and we rode him to glory last season. Aaron Nola, I'm a little bit freaked out by, and that's why we're not going to make the Phillies our series bet for these first two. Uh, Minnesota, we've already got them to win the AL as a ticket here from this show. And that's, yeah, it's, it feels like a homer pick, but I promise you it's more math-based than that, but also maybe a little homer-based. But we're looking tomorrow. That is going to be the series play for you, a lock that you're not going to want to miss in any way, shape, or form. And uh, yeah, I'll save it here. I'll save it here for now. I'll fire it in the premium Discord for the people so that they can know. But the Miami Marlins here, they do get Luis Raz back. That is a big piece that they were missing here from the last couple. Similar to the Trey Turner thing, I guess we just have to... Take their word for it. This ankle injury is not so bad. He's going to be on the uh, roster is the announcement. Does he make the lineup here for the game one? They would really like him leading off here, trying to get guys on base, trying to create some kind of separation for the likes of a Jorge Soler, a Jazz Chisholm, a Jesus Sanchez, a Josh Bell, a Brian De La Cruz, somebody to just hit a bomb and try to sneak out some kind of a win there. Luis Saraz, just get yourself on base, create whatever it is again hit 354 this season seems pretty good to me if you like baseball played like it's 1975 i like my home run hitters i like my ops i like things of that nature but philly's got that in spades and they've got zach wheeler on the mound 278 expected slugging 349 expected slugging actually trails hazel cesardo in terms of strike uh strikeout rate for me here uh 26.9 percent for wheeler 27.7 for Lazardo, and I think Lazardo has a chance to maybe mow down more Phillies than it would seem the market does. Was looking at some of those props, but 
I still am obsessed with the money line here on the Philly side. I think the bullpen is substantially better than what you're looking at from Miami. And I think Miami, Lazard have thrown their ace out right away. Bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see how it works out for him. Zach Wheeler going to be the guy that I want to be backing constantly. Well, I mean, this might be the only opportunity I get to do it. So we're going to do it. Lock button, game one in Philadelphia. I heard their fans like games and cheering and being loud and stuff. Again, that's a little bit of a strange narrative to throw in there but philadelphia money line i'm obsessed with this think this should be minus 185 minus 190 because of how good wheeler is do i think lizardo still has a chance to succeed here sure but give me nine innings of those bats thought about adding it to the seven and eight. and that does it for another edition of lindy's leans likes and locks you know what to do go to that comment section below let me know your favorite plays here for a uh, tuesday for the first round that we have going here of the uh of the al and nl playoffs i had my brain just the, the, the divisional series the divisional series even though there's like another divisional series it's a whole thing the wild card series let's go baby it's gonna be awesome times here in mlb's lindy's leans likes and lock streets but head down sign up for bet 365 too while you're at it again a dollar turns into 365 when you deposit ten dollars or more over at their book great stuff to take advantage of don't know why you wouldn't want to do that have some extra ammunition over for the mlb stuff it's good it's good times. Go Twins, even though I'm not going to bet them. I'm staying far away from that. Thought about betting Gaussman, but I can't do that. You should probably do that. Minus 102 seems like a good number. I should probably go now, too. I'm going to be back here looking forward to talking game two of these series. Coming up very, very shortly. Enjoy sitting on your hands. Houston and Baltimore. Enjoy it. Dodgers and Braves. We'll see you guys soon. But I will see you again here on Wednesday. Until then, I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the MLB streets on Tuesday.